Hey people, this is Efren back with you for another episode of Caribbean and the show about all things Caribbean. End up again. The other day you told us about your scavenging activities. And <laughs> I'd like to know, like, I heard of I heard about the story. Your sister told me a story, I think, about a knight and a tree. Oh lord. I, I, tell us about that. I want to know. I want to know that story today. I want to hear it from you. Okay. So <laughs> Scavenging part two. There was, there was this. So okay, the story is <laughs> there are lots of things that come to mind when you when you say this, but I'll just tell the story. Um, there was a, a tree in the neighborhood, and this tree was the convoitise of all children in the neighborhood. Uh, it was a kennep tree, and it was one of the sweetest kennips I've ever eaten in my life. And of course, everybody wanted a piece of that. The tree was owned, however, by an elderly lady um, who said that nobody should ever climb her tree. Now, the tree was not in her yard, it was across the road, which in a child's eyes is a bit like free for all. I mean, it's not in your yard, so if it's on the side of the road, it's sort of like, you know, public domain. So of course, because she could see us, we would not go climb the tree. Um, however, I had a partner in crime who was master and chief of adventure. So she always had the craziest ideas of things we could do and how we could pull it off. So she suggested one day that we go on a Kenny picking trip at night when everybody was asleep after our own household had fallen asleep. So while our mother slept, we crept out of our window um, uh, I think it was a back door and we went picking Kenneth. So she climbed the tree and she felt around. It was a very dark night. She felt around in the darkness and then she would like pick bunches of Kenneths and then she would hand them down to me and I would put them in my, I had a shirt. I would like fill my shirt with the Kenneths. <laughs> and then we went back home, put the Kenneths in the drawer next to the bed and we spent half the night sucking really hard on Kenneths because we had to get rid of them, like liquidate all kennips before our mother woke up and found out what we had done. So that's the story on the kennips. Uh, why are you so interested in the story, pray tell? I mean, no, but that's, you guys have really crazy stories from childhood. Like I have some, but this is another level, I swear. I think, I think this is really a Dominica thing, you know what I mean? Like here in Martinique, like, I think we had stories of, you know, I don't know, like um, doing, you know, um, mischiefs and like some, some stuff, but I mean... Like TV mischief? <laughs> like mischief you see on TV? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know, but like waking up at night because you wanted to steal Kenneth. That's, that's another level of things, man. But and it also told, I mean, it tells me that somehow what I like when you tell those stories is you, you guys seem so free, you know? Is it like a Dominican thing? Like, is it, do you think like, um, I hear a lot of, I read a lot of comments and I see that, you know, a lot of people have like similar experiences. I'm like, when I go to Dominica, that's how, that's how I feel too, you know? I feel sort of free. more free, you know what I mean? I don't think it's a Dominican thing. I think that, um, well, I don't think at least that it's solely a Dominican thing. I do think that other people in the Caribbean have similar experiences. Um, I, depend, I think it depends on where you grew up. Um, of course, those experiences were more, you probably have more of those experiences if you grew up in a more rural area. I mean, I grew yeah, up in yeah. Dominica, like I grew up in the bush. That's what we call countryside. We call the countryside the bush. Even though Dominica is a lot of bush, even when you're in the city, like, you know, you're pretty close to nature. Uh, but I also think that we had a really special connection to our environment. We had a particularly special connection to food. I don't know what it was, but uh, we had a particular connection to, I think, the environment. We spent a lot of time outside, outdoors. 
um, being at home did not mean being indoors. We spent very little time indoors. Indoors, like in the house, was to sleep. So all of our time was spent outside, climbing trees, um, going to the river, cooking food by the river. We spent a lot of time doing things like building shacks, uh, like shack little houses out of banana leaves first, and then we would go pick up pieces of debris and old pieces of wood and galvanize and build houses. Um, we were very resourceful in making food, uh, like would make would grate green bananas and make uh, porridge, uh, dashing porridge, yam porridge. We made a lot of porridge. I don't know why. I think it was because it was the easiest thing to cook. Um, but yeah, we had that kind of experience, uh, that kind of connection, I think, to our environment, definitely. And I do think that we did have this sort of freedom. When I think of how we were in the space, it was definitely free. Yeah, I see. You know, it's funny because we're the same age, right? And the way we grew up is so different. The way I grew up in Martinique is so different from the way you grew up in Dominica. And when I think of my childhood, and when I think of your childhood, what you're telling me now, you know the stories you tell, I swear to you, for me, that those are some, like, vacation stories, you know? It's like out-of-school stories. Like, like, it's not a daily life thing, you know? Like, Kenneth, it was, you know, summertime, I remember. I would go with my uncle and would like pick up all the cats from the tree and it would be like the big big party because we would eat and ha we would leave the place you know with stomach aches because we ate too much cats. But, so I have those stories but they are really connected to um, holidays moments you know mm -hmm. but the way you tell yours showed me that it's really like a daily life thing like literally after school you would go and do things and you know in Martinique so we, we go to school, um, I mean, school stops like around 5 p.m., like 4, 4 p.m. for, you know, primary school or something, 4 to 5, I can't remember. But it seems that in Dominica you, you leave school earlier, right? Yes, much Do you much, think like much it's linked to that, to the fact that you had more time to experiment and, and, and learn life in a different way? Somehow? I think it's linked to several different things. I think it's linked to an approach... Um, I think it's into parenting approach and maybe culture because just as children in Dominica, we, we grew up like autonomous from like a very young age. You're taught to do, um, to be, to learn how to be very functional by yourself. So you're taught how to cook and you're taught how to wash your own clothes and you're taught how to iron your own clothes and you're taught how to um, go get food from the garden, like to dig food or to, to find food, to, to peel fig, like green fig, like things like that. Um, you're also taught to go, like to walk by yourself, you know, to be by yourself. So I think there's that. Um, I also think that yes, having your school day end earlier definitely <laughs> left you space for you to explore because uh, primary school, I think we finished primary school, it would end at 3.30 and high school ended at 1 p.m. and then 2 p.m. if you had like extracurricular activities. So we did have some time definitely to go home and do your homework but still explore and we did a lot of that, definitely. One of the things that you know, I, like I mentioned in the, um, in the episode yesterday about what is this like shift, the one I was talking about food, related to? Is it related to growing up? Is it related to probably mimicking things that you see on TV as to how you're supposed to live? Is it related to this idea that we have of how developed or developing countries like the um the lifestyle that you're supposed to have in terms of like where you go to source your food etc and when i think of like how we grew up and what we we're talking about it really brings me the question how we now shape the way that we do things um individually but also collectively and the choices that we make for for ourselves and how that determines like our future moving forward as countries and when i think of in a caribbean setting huh, i'm thinking of like um building resilience as countries and 
um, how important it is that we still know how to do those things that we did as children, know how to be very resourceful, how it is important for us to keep those things like close. They're not just childhood memories that you know we think about and we laugh and we, we're a bit nostalgic. These are things that were actually like building blocks and foundations for us as individuals that we need to keep um, because they help us approach like big, the bigger questions that we, that are looking at us, like we're facing right now. I would love to have, of course, your experiences and your thoughts on it. So throw them out there, guys, and I'll see you next time.